What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another episode of The Five Takeaways. We're looking at, the obviously, the nil-nil draw out in Germany against Eintracht Frankfurt in our third Champions League game. Uh, still in good stead in the group. Three games to go, two home games, so uh, still fully expecting to go through. I think we're, we're going good in the group, aren't we? Yeah, we'll st yeah, we'll go. That's one of the takeaways. All right, we'll get into it then. <laughs> let's get into the first takeaway and let's talk about solid long lay. Yeah, and I thought he was um, really good. It was uh, one of, if not his best performance in the Sonoma show, albeit it's not had um, too many uh, performances so far. But um, in terms of um, statistically, I thought defensively he was really, really strong. Um, he made five tackles, which was more than anyone else. Three interceptions. He blocked three shots as well dur during the course of the game, which is mo most on the pitch. Four clearances. He won six of his nine ground jewels and more impressively he won four of his four aerial jewels which Impressive. is something which uh, people have been saying he's not great in the air but that's definitely a positive if he's gonna um, not be bullied aerially yeah, yeah and it's uh, definitely a step in the right direction um, for when you're talking about a competent back three we're playing out the back um, if you can get like him playing consistently at this level with Romero uh, the way he played yesterday and with uh, Eric Dyer in there I think that's a really good back three but we just need to keep them solid and consistent but I'm definitely liking the look of Longley now I mean in the last game against Arsenal I mean I thought he was our best defender but I didn't still I still think he didn't really have a particularly good game so I'm happy to see um, him really step up in the Champions League but let's let's uh, see how he does this weekend at Brighton but Ben Davis is back thick now so we'll see it's got he's got a selection headache on he his hands on Antonio Davis, Conte yeah he did minutes, yeah. Um, but let's move on to the second takeaway and that is open play problems yeah and this is more specifically away from home because uh, in our um, seven away games this season we've only scored four open play goals of those four open play goals that we've scored so um, we've only scored four open play goals in away from home oh away from home away from home um, in um, in the seven away games of those four goals three of them have been scored by Harry Kane the mm. other one by Pierre Milhoibier um, and we haven't scored an open play goal since that late header from Kane against Forrest um, earlier in the season. So uh, the games are mounting up and there seems to be an issue right now with um, whether you can say it's creating chances or just putting them away. We can't seem to be uh, scoring too many goals from open play uh, in uh, uh, um, away from home and that's something that Conte needs to work out why that is. Uh, we've obviously scored a few from set pieces but why are we not scoring from open play? I'm not really sure. Yeah, um, it's a difficult one. I mean, I like I keep saying, I think that the, the problems that we had against Frankfurt were very similar to the problems that we had against Arsenal in the, in the uh, first half, in the latter stages of that first half, where we were building up play really nicely, but it's that final pass and that final third that really lets us down. And um, <coughs> I think Dejan Kulusevski, when he comes back into the team, will make a massive difference to that. But when he's not in the team, we really need to find a way um, how to get around that. And look, I think as well we had a takeaway last week saying away problems how we're not getting enough points away from home which is rightly so but we are having we have had very difficult away games so far so i'd like to see um I'd like to see the stats over maybe a, a more sustained, longer stretch of time. Mm -hmm. But right now, you're definitely right. It's not good enough and we need to find a different way around it. That's for sure. Um, but let's move on to the third takeaway. And that is on the front foot. Yeah. So if you're looking statistically, yesterday was definitely um, a game where we, we were much more on the front foot compared to a lot of our other games this season. Possession wise, we had 58% possession, which is our um, third highest total of the season. Um, we, ha we, we had the most progressive passes in this game that we've had in any other game uh, more progressive carries as well um, so it definitely shows um, a winning list from Spurs to be more on the front foot and actually take the game to Frankfurt rather than a lot of away games where we've kind of been sitting a bit deeper and um, soaking up a lot of pressure even in games like Forest where you know they're, they're not the best team but we still were sitting quite deep in that game so very positive in there and our pressing was actually very impressive yesterday um, in terms of the number of pressures it was actually our third lowest total of the season but in terms of successful pressures, it was our highest. So in t like when it comes to percentage, we had a pressing rate of 43% yesterday, which is our best total um, of the season by 14%. Um, in any game so clearly we must have worked on that and how to um, 
press Frankfurt more efficiently and it seems to be working and I think yesterday we, we were clearly much more on the front foot but unfortunately we just weren't able to make the most of the opportunities we were making yeah and it kind of follows on um, I can't remember who it was I think it was Eric Dyer or Hoybier after the Arsenal game talking about how Conte asked them to press more they told asked them to be a bit more adventurous and, and go for it a bit more um, which we didn't do maybe we not following Conte's orders uh, maybe as much as they should have done in that game and maybe uh, Conte really did grill into them after that game and, and they are starting to, to really get to grips with it and, and start pressing successfully so hopefully this is what we're going to be accustomed to seeing over the next few games and you know we talk about how we think Spurs are going to be a lot better once we start clicking and this is definitely um, a step in the right direction for that to be happening we just need to start clicking the final third and maybe we'll look really dangerous again yep we agree. Uh, let's move on to the fourth takeaway, and that is away in Europe. Yeah, and it's not pretty reading. Um, overall, we haven't won away in Europe since Wolfsburg in 2021. Obviously, that run now continues after the 0-0 draw. Last season, we lost all our conference games. We haven't won away in the Champions League since being Red Star Belgrade back in 2019. Um, and even in, even in that year, um, the other away games, uh, we didn't win. We lost to Olympiacos. Uh, so we drew to Olympiacos, lost to Munich, and then we lost to Leipzig all away from home. So um, this season now, um, under Conte, losing away at Sporting, draw away at Frankfurt, are obviously Champions League away games, just by definition, are going to be the toughest because you're playing the best teams around Europe but still our away record in Europe right now is a really really poor reading and um, not even just right now just ever since I can remember getting back into Europe even under Martin Yol you know what I mean yeah and uh, it's something that um yeah, something that I don't know if it'll ever improve in the short term, but right now our away form um, is is really bad. And you're like, I know we've spoken about our away form like this season in general not being great, but our away form in Europe over a long stretch of time now has been pretty horrendous. It is, it has. And I think though, like everything you're saying is completely right, but I think when you're looking at this game in complete isolation to mm. all the stats and, and everything that goes with it, you've got to say it's a good result in, in the grand scheme of things. And I think that people that are laying into the team, laying into the manager, laying into the situation um, after the game tomorrow, I think it was a bit uncalled for, to be honest. Yeah, I, I think I think anyone... Yeah, I wouldn't have overreacted after yesterday's result because I still think it's uh, we're in a good position, which we'll go into in a minute. Um, but I can... I, there's two sides to it, isn't it? Because I can understand people are a bit frustrated where we're, we're not getting those results uh, away from home and the performance is not being great. But yeah, I think people have to acknowledge that it was a bit of a better performance yesterday. And if we can continue like that, then hope, hopefully it'll be the football will, will, um, will be much better to watch. And we can hopefully grow as a team and, and start picking up a lot better um, results away from home. Yeah, and, but like... The way people are talking and people are talking like Conte needs to go and this is the worst Spurs side we've seen in so I mean the reaction I'm I'm seeing the reaction I'm seeing to Spurs right now with some certain Spurs fans I mean it's just so much moaning right so much moaning and like we're sitting third amazing all the time, we're basically. sitting third in the league with one defeat all season in the Premier League after eight games we're second in the group stage with two home games to come we're in a very good position in the group and uh, and the cups haven't even started yet so I don't even really know what there is to moan about I know the football hasn't been too great this season but we saw at the back end of last season that we that went once we click we're a really dangerous team and you know who better than Antonio Conte to make this team click completely agree so everyone, I think, just needs to calm down a little bit. And not everything is instant, every so, you know, right away. We just need to calm down, support the team, and hopefully they'll get better, because I believe they will. Um, and let's move on to the last takeaway, the fifth and final takeaway, and that is still strong. Yeah, so despite the draw, we still sit um, second in the group. Two points behind Lisbon, who lost 4-1 um, away mm. at Marseille. And I said... Um, Apparently last... the goalkeeper had an absolute mare. Yeah, that's what I've heard. But I said um, when we lost to Lisbon that they will drop points in this group. Mm. I was certain of that. Yeah. Even though they're, they've won both, they've opening two games, they're not going to go winning every game. They'll drop points in that next game. They've obviously been battered by Marseille. So this group group is absolutely wide open so look despite the fact we're second and obviously level with Frankfurt Marseille are now one point behind us um, in bottom in th three points and then 
and then Sporting Lisbon are top of six. That group is wide open and definitely first is there for the taking. Mm. We can just win our home games. For any team. Yeah, 100%. So if we can just win our home games, uh, we, um, obviously we're in a very strong position um, and hopefully uh, we, want, we might only need a draw on the last day or something against Marseille to secure top spot. Mm. So um, a lot is riding on our next home game. Not, no doubt about it. A draw yeah. wouldn't be good enough in that game. We have to win. But, but you know, well, at least the, we put ourselves in a good position. With the way we performed out in Frankfurt, though, you expect us fully expect us to go get that the three points next week uh, when Frankfurt come to Spurs, don't you? Yeah, and you look at our home form, uh, five wins out of five mm. this season. So yeah. there's no reason not to be confident that we can take them at home. Yeah, absolutely. And um, then we got Sporting at home, and then Marseille. I mean, yeah. hopefully, if we if we put if we get those two wins at home. Would you say that that's pretty much going to secure our, our spot? Now, put, now, yeah, now I'm at pass um, on 10 points. Never mind top or, or second. I'm just saying secure the spot into the next round. Yeah, it should do. Uh, I, I can't see any uh, more than two teams getting 10 points. Mm. That, that, would be, that would be incredible if that would happen. So I think two wins and that's pretty much qualification, yeah. All right, so there you have it. That is our five takeaways from the game out in Frankfurt yesterday. The nil-nil draw in our third group stage game in the Champions League. Let me know what you think of our takeaways and also put your takeaways in the comment section below. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on you Spurs. Yeah.